These days, it is not uncommon for people to often joke about Hondas, whether it be the Royster culture or the whole VTEC kicked in meme. However, the engineering behind how VTEC works is actually no joke. It is actually quite clever and in this video, we'll be diving into how VTEC actually works and how it compares to other competitors like Toyota's VVTi system and Nissan's Neo VVL. Let's get right into it. So what does VTEC actually stand for? Well, VTEC stands for Variable Valve Timing and Lift Electronic Control. Yeah, it's a lot longer than you probably expected, but the two terms you need to focus on are Variable Valve Timing and Variable Valve Lift. Let's start with Variable Valve Timing. A four-stroke internal combustion engine has four main steps, or strokes. The intake stroke, where the air-fuel mixture enters the combustion chamber. The compression stroke, where the mixture is compressed. The power stroke, where the mixture is ignited and the exhaust stroke, where the gases from the combustion are forced out of the cylinder. Valves are used to control when air enters and leaves the combustion chamber, as you can see here. These valves are controlled by camshaft lobes, which push a rocker arm or hydraulic lifter to open the valves, allowing air in or out of the combustion chamber. You may think that the intake and exhaust valves should open exactly at the start of the intake and exhaust strokes respectively. However, air can't just immediately flow as soon as the valves open as air behaves much like a liquid, and it needs a bit of time to enter the combustion chamber. This usually isn't too much of an issue for low-performance vehicles, as they don't rev too high, but at higher revs, this becomes a real issue. Take this BMW S1000RR for instance, a 1000cc 4-cylinder superbike capable of revving up to 14,000 RPM. At those engine speeds, the valves are opening and closing at over 100 times a second, and fresh air just can't enter the combustion chamber quickly enough. At the same time, the exhaust gases also don't have enough time to leave the combustion chamber. So what's the solution to this? Well, you may have guessed from the name that variable valve timing adjusts when those valves open and close. At higher RPMs, the VVT system adjusts the timing such that the valves overlap and allow both the intake and exhaust valves to open at the same time. This is done by using oil pressure to adjust the camshaft timing like shown in this animation. This adjustment of valve timing allows engines to perform better not just at high RPM, but also improve low RPM performance. So that's the variable valve timing aspect covered, but what about variable valve lift? So with VVT, we covered the issue of air not getting into the combustion chamber in time, but as you know, there's more ways of increasing the air that goes into the combustion chamber. Remember those camshaft lobes from earlier? Well, the height of those lobes determine how much the valves open. A higher lift means that the valve opens a lot more, allowing more air to flow into the combustion chamber, thus making more power. However, it isn't all that simple. At lower RPMs where the air is flowing at a slower speed, increasing lift may actually slow down the flow of air, hurting performance. Instead, higher lift camshafts usually gain power up top while losing a bit down low. The solution? Well, making the lift of the camshafts variable, obviously. In most VVL systems, including Honda's VTEC, there are two sets of camshaft low profiles, an economy profile used for low RPM city commuting and a higher lift performance slope used at higher RPMs. VTEC engines feature a complex rocker arm system that only engages the economy profile lobes at low RPM, while the rocker arm associated with the performance slope moves on its own independently. At a predetermined RPM, a hydraulic pin locks the rocker arms together, causing the valves to follow the performance slope over the economy lobe. When this happens, you may feel a slight bump or kick, and that's kind of where the meme came from. When VTEC engages, there is also an audible change. Take a listen. Toyota's VVTi system stands for Variable Valve Timing with intelligence. VVTi only features variable valve timing, but a different variation known as VVTLI also features variable valve lift. That's where the L comes from. Nissan also has a similar system called Neo VVL, or Nissan Ecology Oriented Variable Valve Lift and Timing, which is a pretty self-explanatory name. 
Anyways, that is essentially how variable valve timing and variable valve lift works. Using either or both of these technologies, manufacturers can squeeze out a lot more power from their engines without necessarily sacrificing fuel economy. This is partly how Honda, Nissan, and Toyota were able to squeeze a good amount of power out of a little four-cylinder, ranging from around 180 horsepower in Nissan's 1.6-liter SR16VE to almost 250 horsepower in Honda's 2-liter F20C used in the AP1S2000. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. This video was an update on the original video from about 4 years ago and the information my 14 year old self compiled was definitely lackluster and borderline incorrect. Either way, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.